Welcome back. We've seen that in Fallen Man, the desire to control others is strong, and we call this witchcraft. But what about the desire that got the human race into big trouble, the fall of man in Genesis? Was that a desire to control others? Not at all. It was the desire for what? Knowledge. And this desire for knowledge is the second branch of witchcraft. We call it divination. Now, when Adam reached out to the forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil, in an illegitimate way, he wasn't supposed to do it, he became the captive of Satan. Genesis 2 and verse 17. Untold millions of his descendants have been lured into, pulled into the occult by the desire for knowledge. Think about this, two examples here. A family member dies and mum says, where did my son go when he died? What do they end up doing? They go to a seance. Young adults thinking about marriage, wondering whether it's a good idea to marry this particular person. Am I going to have a happy marriage? Tell me, how many children am I going to have? And so on. What do they do? They go to a fortune teller. Now, in society, in the Apostle Paul's time, as today, foretelling the future was big business. Let's think about uh, Paul's visit to uh, Philippi with Silas. This is in Acts 16, verses 16 and 17. When Paul and Silas first arrived to preach the gospel in Philippi, it happened as they went to prayer that a certain slave girl, possessed with a spirit of divination, there it is, met us, who brought her owners much gain by fortune-telling. She kept on following Paul, shouting loudly, These men are servants of the Most High God. They announced to you the way of salvation. Now, Paul put up with it for a certain amount of time. Uh, what this girl was saying was absolutely true, but she did not know it by natural means. She knew it by supernatural means. She, didn't, she wasn't uh, an educated kid. She was, she was just a slave girl. But she recognised who Paul and Silas was. And um, she was the first person, but she knew it. It was not by God's spirit. She knew it by a divining spiritual spirit of divination. And uh, it was this fortune-telling spirit got its, her owners a lot of money. The Greek actually says having a spirit of python. The Greek word used is P-U-T-H-O-N, python or a python spirit, in other words, a snake spirit. And remember, snakes have always been regarded in pagan society as somehow the source of unusual knowledge and wisdom. Now, in the end, Paul got fed up, and he turned around and commanded python to come out in the name of Jesus. And the spirit came out, spirit of divination, python came out, and she was no longer able to tell fortunes. Well, that made a big loss, a big hole in the income of her owners. And uh, not only did that python spirit uh, operate through the girl, it was the big chief in Philippi. It was a strong man in Philippi. The whole city was given over to this spirit. Now, even on arrival in the town, this is where we have to be careful. We go to a new town. We have to be careful that the spirits of that town will attack us. And this python spirit attacked Paul and Silas as soon as they went to the place of prayer, a vicious attack. They were brought in front of the magistrates and the whole city was in uproar just because a slave girl was delivered from a spirit of divination. You read that in Acts 16 verses 19 and 20. Now, Python's tactics are typically this, false accusations, violent persecution and bondage. Python will try to inflict physical and emotional wounds on us. It will also stir up old wounds of the past and magnify unresolved pain to hinder our prayer lives. Python spirits are bad news. And unless the Apostle Paul 
had broken the stronghold of Python at Philippi, there would have been no establishing a church there. And uh, the Apostle Paul loved that church. He, he, he wrote letters to that church, very happy letters. But he wouldn't have been able to establish that strong church if he had not dealt with Python and stirred up a riot because it wasn't just a slave girl, it was the whole town. Python is a principality, and mentioned in uh, Ephesians 6, we wrestle with principalities. It's a principality and a major branch of witchcraft. Now, notice that when Jesus gave his disciples authority over demons, he particularly mentioned serpents and scorpions, Luke 10 and verse 19. Now, those of us who cast out spirits regularly, we're used to Jezebel, we're used to witchcraft and religion as common enemies in spiritual warfare, along with fear and rejection and other very common spirits. But serpents and scorpions aren't usually in our first uh, thinking, not usually the first thing that comes to mind, but they form a huge group of water or marine spirits, and they're less well known. And we're going to be looking at uh, marine spirits after this study on witchcraft. Many people are drawn by unseen forces to go on holiday by the sea, yeah, or camp by rivers and lakes, the big pull of the water. Hiding behind the natural beauty of such places, it's wise to realise there are strongholds of marine devils who, under the control of Python and Le Levithian, they cause great trouble to people, especially those on holiday. Anyway, after studying this, uh, one more branch of witchcraft we've got to deal with, and that's in my next video, and explaining how to be free from it, we will later go on and take the mask off these less known underwater spirits. I think you'll enjoy that. Look forward to seeing you then.